week 16 of the fantasy football season. Here's a few wide receivers. I looked at off the wire this week. The first guy, Joshua Palmer, a Los Angeles Chargers. So Joshua Palmer, he came back off the injured reserve. And in that embarrassing loss, he had a monster game at the Vegas Raiders, losing 63-21, to four catches, 113 yards, and a touchdown. So this week here, tough matchup once again versus the Buffalo Bills. They just shut down the Dallas Cowboys offense. CeeDee Lamb really didn't do much besides a garbage time touchdown in that one. It might be tougher for Joshua Palmer unless Keenan Allen comes back and he gets that one-on-one coverage because we know Keenan Allen... He missed that ball game last week where he was out with the injury. So we'll see if Allen returns. But Joshua Palmer, he was put up numbers last season and earlier this season before he went on injury reserve. And right now he's available in 71% of fantasy leagues and operating as the number two receiver in this Charger offense. Next receiver is Noah Brown of the Houston Texans. And Nico Collins, he missed this ball game. Obviously tanked out out for the season. But Noah Brown, he came in. After being quiet the last four weeks of the season and had a monster game at Tennessee. Eight catches, 82 yards, a touchdown on 11 targets. So week 16, a tough matchup versus the Browns, no doubt about it. Give up the second least amount of fantasy points to wide receivers on the season. But Noah Brown, like I said, is going to be a big part of this offense. Even if Nico Collins returns, he's going to be a guy, obviously, that they're going to look to with either Case Keenum or CJ Stroud, a quarterback. Even though I believe Stroud's going to return after missing one week with a concussion. So the Texans, they survived that ball game in week 15. They were force feeding Noah Brown. He had a good ball game, no doubt about it. And right now, while he's out there in 60% of fantasy leagues, and we've seen big games from him early in the season, he's definitely a wide receiver. I would go out there and get off the wire this week. The next receiver, Curtis Samuel, or the Washington Commanders. So Curtis Samuel, it's been a hot and cold type of year for him. And the last couple weeks, he's starting to get things going, though. Week 12 at Dallas, nine catches, 100 yards. Week 13 versus the Dolphins, four catches, 65 yards. And week 15, a big ball game coming off the bye at the Rams. Five catches, 41 yards, and two touchdowns. So Curtis Samuel, we know he's a gadget guy type of wide receiver. They've lined them up in the backfield at times. They use them on under rounds and jet sweeps. And him and Sam Howell all season have had a decent rapport. So right now, while he's been back in the offense over the last few weeks and playing good football, it's Curtis Samuel. He's definitely a wide receiver. I've looked at it off the wire. Available in 63% of fantasy leagues. Now this week, a tough matchup at the Jets that give up the least amount of fantasy points to receivers on the season. But this is a game where I think Sam Howell and this team is going to find ways to move the football. We saw the Dolphins go up and down the field even without Jalen Waddle. Even though I'm not comparing this commander offense to Miami, but still even without Tyreek Hill, they move the football a lot as Miami. And I think Washington could find ways to move the football. And current to Samuel could have a decent ball game. The next receiver, Tavian Wicks of the Green Bay Packers. So Wicks, he's been a surprise rookie over the last few weeks and more into this offense for this Green Bay Packer team. Christian Watson's been out the last couple weeks and pretty much the whole season on and off with a hamstring injury. Wicks, he's gone in there and made some plays, him and Jaden Reed, and they've looked good for this young Packer team. Week 13 versus the Chiefs, three catches, 43 yards. Week 14 at the Giants, two catches, 20 yards. And week 15 in that one versus Tampa, six catches, 97 yards. The best game of his short NFL career for the rookie week. So week 16, decent matchup at the Panthers. I know they give up the fourth least amount of fantasy points to receivers on the season. But right now, they obviously can't stop anyone. I know they won that ball game in a rainstorm, which was only their second win of the season was the Panthers versus the Atlanta Falcons. But I think Wicks and deeper leagues can help fantasy owners where you play with a lot of flex options or just as a backup guy, just in case something happens to one of your wide receivers in practice or as the week goes on. So right now available 97% of fantasy leagues. And the final wide receiver I looked at off the wire is DJ Montgomery of the Indianapolis Colts. So Montgomery, he was a factor in that ball game in week 15. Once Michael Pittman went down with injury and we figured Josh Downs, well, Alec Pierce would have stepped up for this Colts team, but it was DJ Montgomery, two catches, 48 yards and a touchdown. So right now, obviously, he's a deeper league type of head is DJ Montgomery. But if Michael Pittman is going to miss this game after getting a crazy hit, he hit to the helmet in that ball game. He's definitely a wide receiver that could see a lot of playing time for this Colt team. And he fit right in. Him and Gardner Minshew actually had decent rapport in that ball game. So I know we haven't seen much out of Montgomery. He finally got an opportunity available in 99% of fantasy leagues. And if you need to play in deeper leagues, he's definitely a receiver there this week. So that's a few wide receivers. I looked at it off the wire here for week 16 of the fantasy football season.